Hello and welcome to this fourth tutorial on working with Encore. We're building a basic project and what we've done so far is we've imported four timelines into our project. We've imported a menu which was created from a frame from the timeline that we were working with which we took into Photoshop and adjusted and saved as a PSD. And then in the next tutorial we got some video buttons from our library and then we wired them up in our flowchart so that we know that when we put the disk in it will go straight to the menu and then we have four buttons the first button will play the first timeline and when it finishes the end action will take it back to the menu and then wait for you to either select another button or eject the DVD however I left one unwired because as you can probably appreciate these projects can get very complicated particularly when you have multiple menus and so rather than just depending on how it looks and making sure that it all appears to be wired up properly there is actually a tool in Encore to check to see if you've left something out. Now that tool can be found under the file menu when you go file, check project and then a check project box opens showing you all the things that it is going to check. Leave these ticked unless you're absolutely certain that you know what you're doing just leave them checked and then click where it says start. Click start and it says oh hang on a second we've got one problem here wallet timeline no end action has been set and as you can see here's the wallet timeline and that's right no end action has been set so what we can do is we can take the end of our wallet timeline and with the pick whip go back to the menu and now it's all set up now if your project window gets really full when you're wiring it up you can use the tilde key as you can in after effects and sometimes in premiere pro although it doesn't always work for me Anyway, whatever panel your cursor is over, if you hit the tilde key on your keyboard, which on a Windows keyboard is to the left of the number 1, you'll see that you maximise the screen and you can actually get a good feel for how everything's looking. Because as I say, these things can get really, really large. Okay, so I'm going to hit the tilde key to go back to normal sizes. I'm sorry I can't remember off the top of my head where the tilde key is on the Mac keyboard, but it is definitely there. I have a sneaking suspicion it's down on the right near the return button but don't take my word for it have a look okay so we've wired up our project we'll do another check just to make sure so file check project and click start no items found it's okay we know that we've actually got this wired up properly we're ready to build our DVD or build whatever we're going to build now you can get to the build either by clicking the build tab or if you want to use a menu you can click build and then it gives you options here. I would work from the build tab and I'm going to open it up so that we can see it fully. So we have options. Now format is quite an interesting one because we have the option to go for DVD, Blu-ray or Flash which means you can produce a web DVD. So rather than actually creating a physical disk you can create something that can go onto a website that's menu driven so effectively creating a flash website through Encore which I think is really powerful at the moment we'll work through as if we're going to create a DVD I might come back and show you the flash options in a minute so obviously you've got the different options here um, output DVD disk you can go to disk folder images bits and pieces I'm not going to go into all of those at the moment we're just going to work with a disk you might be going for a master if you're going to have the DVD replicated. Just so that you know the difference, a duplicated DVD is burnt. So that they take a laser and they pit it. They burn inside the disc to pit it to create the ones and zeros and create the image. Whereas a replicated DVD is actually printed with a glass master. And they tend to last longer, but you can't really do those for quantities less than... I think they can do them for about 500 now, but really a 1,000 is the minimum you should really do. But if you're going to do that, you might want to create a DVD master. But anyway, we're just going to work with a disk. Again, you can check the project from here. If you click build, it's going to build straight away. So what you need to do is look at the settings. Okay, so source. Where are we going to get our source for this DVD from? We're going to use the current project. You can use a disk image or a volume, but obviously we're just going to use the project. Destination. So where's the recorder? What is it? How fast can it work? What speed can it cut at? As you can see, mine's exceptionally slow. This bar here is showing you how much of the disk is actually being used. As you can see, this is a tiny project just because it's for demonstration purposes only. But I have actually made projects which require dual layer disks, so 8.5 gigabytes. So you can actually produce projects which work with dual layer. 
However, from experience, sometimes it's actually cheaper to produce two standard disks than it is to produce a dual layer disk, unless perhaps you're doing replication. Anyway, standard disks, 4.7 gig. We're ready to go with that. We're only cutting on one side. Obviously, it's not a two-sided disk. If you want to add ROM content, now, these might be, say, PSDs that you want people to be able to download or project files that you want people to be able to download from the disk itself. This is where you add it in. Now, these will not show up, note, on the menu. So they aren't going to be there on the menu, but they will be on the disk. So if somebody sticks in a computer and browses the disk, they will find the ROM content that you add in. And it's found here, Browse. And what I would do is, if you have quite a lot of ROM content, you're only going to be able to bring in a single folder. So make sure that that folder has got subfolders inside of it with all the different bits and pieces that you want. Browse in here and then it will be added to the disk and you'll see how much space it takes up. Generally speaking, ROM content tends to be quite small because they're usually text-based type things. Anyway, and then what sort of regions do you want to do? Do you want to do all regions or do you want to choose custom regions? And uh, I'll leave that up to you to work through. And finally, copy protection. Unlimited copies are allowed. No copies are allowed. One copy is allowed. Not all of these work from experience. We're going to go with unlimited copies allowed. And there are different options that you can pursue with various different formats, CSS, Macrovision. Um, the thing to bear in mind, I can't remember off the top of my head which one it is, but using one of these actually requires you to pay a license fee. So before you get into copy protection and start clicking all these buttons and doing multiple copies, just make sure that you've looked through which one you can use and whether you have got the license agreement or else you could be liable for a bit of money. Okay, so that's how we can create the disk. When we're ready to go, we just click build and it's going to burn. However, before we click this build button, there's one other thing that we can do to check out what our project's like. And that is, we can preview it. And if you go to File, and you go down here, you will see something that says Preview. And notice it has a good shortcut, Alt, Control, Spacebar. Click on Preview, and you'll actually get a preview of what your project looks like. How the buttons are when selected, and then you can click on any one of them and have a look and see what it's like. And it will play through. And then return back to the menu. So you can go on any one of these, have a look, see what it's like, click on it and play. You're going to get a complete preview of what the movie's like. You can fast forward it to the end if you like as well. You don't have to watch the whole timeline. It takes you back to the menu. So if this all works and you've got the right sound and it's doing everything that you want it to do, you can exit and return, or you can exit here, and then you're ready to build your DVD. In the next tutorial, I'm just going to briefly go through some of these flash options and how you can create a menu-driven website by using Encore. Mm -hmm.